Hello, and welcome to another fireside chat. We do have a fire going today. It is still cold in here. As you can tell by my frozen kerosene. It is a, allegedly, a historic day. Um, there was a, well, people were sworn in on a piece of paper that, uh, None of them have actually read. So there is that. But, you know, we've got, um, the first, the first senile old man in office, the oldest, uh, person ever, uh, put into the commander-in-chief position. So there is that. And then um, they kept talking about the first Asian American slash uh, African American, which technically is not true just because her father is Jamaican. He did own a plantation. His grandfather, her grandfather, owned a plantation that had slaves. So... All right, kudos to you. So, in all honesty, I uh, kind of forgot, thinking that they weren't going to uh, have a public inauguration, which technically they didn't. It was on TV, and, uh, you know, 25,000 National Guard's troops, minus 12, um, were there protecting people who uh, definitely, you know, for... Just throwing this out there because, you know, we got to point out the hypocrites when we can, uh, who do not know how to wear masks. Uh, it seemed like the lower level staff knew what an N95 mask was, and the other people had their Gucci Prada, um, Ralph Lauren, maybe. I don't know. Um, was that too, too low on the class scale for these people? And then when they were wearing it, you know, it's like down here, nose fully exposed. You had Garth Brooks running around making sure that everybody got COVID. Kudos to him if Hillary got it. Because, you know, that was not only did he hug Hillary, kissed her on the cheek. Is he a patriot? Is he an ass kisser? Is he both? I don't know. But Garth Brooks, no mask, hugging, kissing. Fondling everyone at the inauguration. It was amazing. And then you had J-Lo. Finally starting to look old. Sorry, but you are. And, uh, you know, she uh, did her thing. Spoke some Spanish. Got to get that in there, you know. Check that off the list. You know, Biden approves of uh, people speaking Spanish. And, uh... Let's get to the speech, shall we? Now, before I go on this long tirade about the things that were said, what we can expect, and how everybody is just full of shit these days, I'm going to need a drink. And this is a 2008 bottle of The Novelist, a California white wine. Crack that open. The same night I uh, finished the Bangor Shuffle. Not finished. Posted it on Amazon. It is now available in print and ebook for purchase. If you enjoy good action movies slash books, action adventure, it's probably for you. So, that is available. Ebook, the very, very reasonable price of two ninety nine, because I don't think anybody should be limited to what they can read and enjoy and be entertained with, because of cost. And let's face it, it's an ebook. You're not getting a physical copy. Why the hell should an ebook ever cost more than like five bucks? But they do, and it's weird. I don't get it. I'm not the publishers. Don't ask me. 
Cheers. Yes, this is a plastic hotel mug because I didn't have a way of getting a real wine glass out here without breaking the damn thing. We fancy up here in the cabin. So, half and half mystery bowl. Let's get to it. Heard a lot of mentioning of democracy and saving democracy. Except we're a republic. And as somebody who is a senator, a seat that really doesn't make sense in a democracy. If we were just a democracy, you would really only have the House of Representatives. Because that goes by population. Does not go by, you know, making sure that states have equal representation regardless of economic prowess, population, size, GDP, whatever. Uh, it would just be a democracy, you know. Um, but no, we've got these two, two sections, House of Representatives, the Senate, then you've got the President, and, uh, if we were just a democracy, one of those wouldn't be there. So, a lot of talk about democracy, a lot of talk about how we have to heal, come together, blah, blah, blah. My favorite part was, uh, even if you voted for the other guy, give me a chance. We have to be one nation. We have to heal. Blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, at the same time, the FBI is vetting the 25,000 National Guard troops that are in D.C. How are they vetting these people? Ah! <laughs> Twitter, Facebook, text messages. They are checking their text messages on their phones to see what kind of stuff they have said about the incoming administration or if they supported the previous administration. One uh, individual, because he had posted a Gadsden flag, uh, was relieved of his post. Uh, people who had voted for Trump or supported Trump were relieved of their post, sent home, not allowed to work in D.C. while this other dude is being inaugurated. Okay. So nothing says healing like telling people that they're not allowed to do their job, that they, you know, also swore to uphold the Constitution. Uh, you're not allowed to do your job. Because the other person who is rightfully elected, like they're saying this current president, Biden, was rightfully elected, uh, nothing says it's a good time to heal like saying you're fired because you like that guy. Interesting. So, the FBI is running around like the Stasi. They're searching through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, your text messages on your own personal phone because, hey, you know, it's all kept... Snowden warned us about this, right? If you have any, any allegiance or agreement with the other party, you're the enemy of the state now. Yay. So where? Where do we go from here? And what else did I, uh... Well, Kamala Harris didn't say anything other than, like, you know, doing the whole, like, I'm being sworn in thing. She didn't, no speech, no nothing out of her. And uh, she walked with Pence, relieving him of his duty <laughs> at the end of everything. She's pretty much like, get in the car, bye. And uh, I kind of feel bad for that guy. Because he has done so much to try to distance himself from Trump after this whole thing. And, uh, yeah, you know, when when those, uh, <laughs> when those trials start, <laughs> when they're like, hey, you supported this guy. Trump, you know, Pence is probably going to be like, well, you know, I was, I was there to, like, balance things and make sure I didn't do anything stupid and... Uh, probably trying to make himself sound like he's like a, a big hero for 
for being vice president. Who knows? And, uh, man, okay, so Steve Bannon was pardoned. Don't know why. Can't think of any crimes that he really committed. Little Wayne. Because that needed to happen. Uh, yeah, Little Wayne was pardoned for, I, I don't know. Um, in the meantime, Julian Assange, who Pamela Anderson, of all people, was like, you really should pardon him. Uh, no, Trump didn't do that. Trump didn't, um, pardon Snowden, which, um, you know, gotta say it, makes him a complete failure, loser, in my book, he had four years to get something like this done. And uh, even at the last minute, when Tucker Carlson, Pamela Anderson, who knows? Who knows how many other people were like, Julian Assange, for whatever reason, I don't know. And I think what it really came down to is Mitch McConnell... Saying, if you, if you pardon Assange, we will impeach you and convict. Which, I don't know why Trump cares in four years. Is, is, is he seriously going to consider running for president again in four years? I highly doubt it. He'll be like 80-something at that point. He'll be on his fourth or fifth wife. Maybe he'll have syphilis by then. I don't know. But it just pisses me off that, you know, could not get that done. Uh, for somebody who talked about draining the swamp and setting things right, yeah, that didn't happen. So Assange, still destined to just uh, rot overseas for, for no reason, which is complete BS. In other news, the collapse experiment.com, uh, still seeing higher traffic. I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised. Um, uh, you know, uh, I think it all started with a movie review and people started checking out the other articles and were like, I like what this guy has to say. And, um, yeah, traffic's been high ever since. Huh. Volume two of, uh. From the cabin is up and posted. There is one story I uh, I left out. I talked about it previously about the doctor who died after getting the COVID vaccine. Because I wanted to do a little more research into that before I wrote about it. I did do a post on... Uh, you know, the FBI working as uh, Biden's personal Stasi, because that's a thing. It's it's all happening now. So, yeah, be careful about what you post and what you like and who you are. And heaven forbid you're a straight white man. Um, it's uh, scary times. And uh, definitely... Regardless of what the incoming president said, I I don't have any trust in anything that came out of his mouth today. Uh, the moment he was done being sworn in, did anybody notice this? Where he was, uh, he's standing there, and he's just kind of like, uh, I, uh. <laughs> And then his wife comes and hugs him, and he's just kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. It's like taking Grandpa out for dinner at Old Country Buffet, and at the end of the buffet, he stands there with his tray, trying to remember where this food came from, where he was, and then realizing, I don't know where I'm sitting. That's what it reminded me of. So the clock is ticking. And I asked the question, how long until Kamala Harris smothers Joe Biden with a MyPillow? 
And they can frame to my pillow guy and say, well, we know you're conspiring with Trump. Why just mother Biden to death? And we can have the first female <sighs> descendant of a slave owner, Asian American, <sighs> prosecuting attorney who put black people in the prison. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, then we can have that for president. Because, you know, after, <laughs> after all the riots, BLM complaining about, you know, the improper treatment of black people in the United States. Yeah, that's, that's who you want in office. And they wonder why nobody from the administration wants to talk to them. Who would have thunk it? Uh. So, the gears keep moving. All the things that the government wanted to do four years ago under Hillary Clinton. They're going to just railroad everything for the next two years. And just plow it through. They have... 16 bills right now in Texas, state government, going before <laughs> the uh, state house, gun control, Texas, of all places, New York, New York State is trying to outlaw civilians owning bulletproof armor. It's already a state where it's hard as hell to even own a gun. And, uh, you know, considering that crime has gone up, man, what was the number? It was like 155% first 10 days of 2021. Uh, gun crime in New York City has gone up that much. And you can't own a... They're trying to make it so you can't own a bulletproof vest. This is the... Uh, the weird, weird stuff that, that's coming our way. If you're in the military and you hold the wrong opinion on stuff, bye. Pretty soon, uh, you know, the FBI is going to be looking at their own people. That's going to get interesting. You know, during the Cold War, the East Germans, yeah, they had their... Uh, <laughs> basically their homeland security, uh, the Stasi, running around from the 1950s all the way to the fall of the USSR, so what, 90, 91? And uh, these guys are running around, people are disappearing. If you wrote, if you're a writer and you wrote an article not, in, not making the government seem as great as it was, you disappear. Family members would disappear. Neighbors were turning in neighbors for the sake of, well, if somebody turns me in, at least I can say that I supported the state. Not that they give a shit once you get hauled in. <clears throat> Millions of people disappeared during that time. And it wasn't until the East German government fell that all those records were released as to what happened to everyone? And for a lot of people, they still don't know. So, what would that have been like if we had social media? If we had cell phones that tracked our every movement? Listened in our conversations? And I know some of you are out there like, Dude, why are you talking into your phone, making this video, pointing all this shit out? I already know what's coming. I don't really give a shit. It's like, how important am I? Well, I guess it depends on how bored these people get. So with COVID, <clears throat> with the Great Reset, <clears throat> with Agenda 21, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> you look at China, you see the face recognition software, the social credit score, the tr movement tracking of people, concentration camps, 
Did I mention Germany is now uh, forcibly detaining people who don't adhere to the lockdown? And they actually use the term detention center. It, that's like one country that should definitely stay away from center, detention, uh, any type of camps. Like, these are not words that the uh, German government should be uh, talking about after <laughs> what happened there repeatedly. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where Germany is going with their lockdowns. And um, there was also talk in New York of, uh, yeah, there's a bill going before the state government in New York that says that they can detain you if they think you even came in contact with somebody or something which may have had COVID. So, yeah, what Germany is doing, New York State is looking at doing. And, hey, if we get one state that passes something like this and the rest of the states are like, that's a great idea. It's, yeah, bad news. So, 2021. Like, if, if 2020 was a movie, that was Batman Begins. You know, that was, that was where we're introduced to the villain. We have yet to really see a hero. And uh, now I think we're going into the Dark Knight. And things are going to get really messy. And hopefully, hopefully, 2022 is way, way better than Dark Knight Rises. Because that movie sucked. It was three movies thrown into one. It didn't make any sense. Just... Ugh. Horrible piece of crap. And in all honesty, like, wasn't Bane really kind of the, the hero of that? I mean, aside from the, the weird whole, like, bomb thing, like, counting down and the whole city was going to be destroyed for, like, absolutely no reason. He's holding everybody hostage, but then there's, like, this deadline for when this bomb is going to go off. Not one of Christopher Nolan's best films. But hopefully 2022 is, is not that. Anybody could really do better than that. But I have a feeling this is going to be a weird, epic year. We're going to see a lot of horrible stuff. Uh, we're going to see more surveillance, more censorship, um, more people thrown off of the, the internets, as they say around here. And... Um, yeah, people are definitely going to lose their First Amendment rights. And, uh, you know, it's it's weird. When I talk to people who are liberals slash Democrats, let's just say they voted for Biden. Um, whenever I bring up, like, the whole censorship thing, they're like, well, they're private companies. And I'm like, isn't that usually like a Republican talking point? So that's about it for me. I don't trust anything that comes out of these people's mouths. They have absolutely no interest in healing the country moving forward. We're going to see like this whole backslide of shit coming our way. And um, yeah, it's going to be absolutely horrible. And, and you know, you want to know what's coming. Just look at the uh, cultural revolution of China. That's what's going to happen. All of a sudden, there's going to be, like, these weird makeshift courts. People are going to be brought up, and they'll be like, So, why'd you vote for the orange man who's bad? And they'll be like, Who's better than Hillary? Come on, you guys didn't even vote for her. And then they really won't have a counter-argument other than you just shouldn't have voted for the orange man because he's bad. So, yeah, 1984, I wish it was fiction. Somehow that dude got it right. But, uh, hey, considering what was going on in the Ukraine and the people he was talking to at the time, I think he had a really good idea as to what was coming our way. 
In the meantime, keep on typing.